Thank you, everyone, for coming. And um, uh, yeah, as, as was just mentioned, we have been in lithium for a while. Um, and our <clears throat> sort of stick to itness has helped us get to a point where we're actually constructing our project uh, as we speak. So during this, we've just completed our project financing. I'll go through some of the details of that. Um, and, and, uh, and then I'll also just give you a quick uh, construction update timeline, uh, what to expect going forward when we are anticipating production, both out of the mine as well as the electrochemical plant. So um, <clears throat> we'll get right into it. So Namaska is, uh, as I mentioned, fully funded. So we have raised 1.1 billion. I'll go through uh, how we were managed to uh, tap the market and what sources of financing that we used to pull in that money. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll do that in another slide. We are vertically integrated. So we are going from the mine. Um, we are a hard rock based project. So we'll be going from the mine all the way through to the battery chemicals. Our focus is hydroxide, but we do have the capacity to make uh, carbonate as well. We are projecting to be the lowest cost producer of lithium hydroxide. That's uh, based on our feasibility study, which was published in 2018. I'll show you a slide later on in the presentation that shows how we compare with some of the other existing producers and those that are projected to be online by 2021. Um, <clears throat> we are near-term cash flow. So we will be in production out of our mine by 2019, and we do have an offtake agreement in place for that concentrate product. So we'll be producing a lithium concentrate by the end of the year of 2019, and we'll be selling that to a uh, Chinese transformation company uh, who'll be transforming the concentrate for about a year or so from us into uh, battery chemicals. We uh, do have world-class counterparties, and by that I guess I mean investors and key stakeholders, one being the government of Quebec, who's been a critical investor uh, and supporter of Namaska throughout the life of our project. And then in the last project financing, we were able to attract uh, SoftBank, which many of you know, uh, it's, a, I think, the fourth largest company in Japan. So a uh, big, significant international player, mostly involved in telecommunications tech. Uh, but interesting that they've actually started to uh, to make a, make a, uh, an entry into the lithium space. So I think that was good for the whole lithium uh, and battery material space. <clears throat> we do have strong support from um, from from stakeholders, as I said, government of Quebec, um, and then also producing phase one plant. So we are producing out of the phase one plant. We have been producing for about a year, and to date we've made about 50 tons of battery grade lithium hydroxide. Um, I have a spec later on in, in the presentation that shows you um, what our specifications are, product specifications are uh, for that material. So uh, very quickly, on the 1.1 billion, so we raised 1.1 billion Canadian and we basically went to uh, the far reaches of this planet to do it and we've tapped, I think, just about every form of um, a financial tool that we could. Um, so we did 454 million Canadian in equity, 94 million came in from SoftBank, 80 million from the government of Quebec, uh, and 200 million was done in a public offering. Uh, it was a bought deal led by National Bank and Bank of Montreal out of Canada. <clears throat> we also signed a streaming deal with Orion Mine Finance. That was for 150 million US. It was Orion's first lithium stream deal. Um, <clears throat> that is for the life of the project, and it is capped at 5,000 tons per year. It nets out that Orion will receive 8.7% of our, of our uh, revenue. We uh, also went the debt route. We, we, we were looking at traditional debt through the banks. However, that pathway was, go was going to be taking too long um, for the banks to basically uh, get comfortable with, uh, with financing a lithium, a lithium project. So we did go through the senior secured bond route. So those are listed on the Norwegian exchange. They are trading above par right now. I think they traded about a dollar four. They bear an 11.25% uh, coupon. So the use of proceeds, 800 million will go uh, to cover the uh, project financing. Um, within that 800 million number, that would include building the mine as well as the electrochemical plant in Chewinigan. It also includes um, some contingency as well as working capital. 
We raised about two years of interest payments at 128 million in, in addition, so the, the lenders wanted to make sure that we had capital to uh, service the debt. So uh, included in the 1.1 million is 128 in interest payments, 87 million in working capital. Um, we also raised, uh, included in that is a $40 million cost overrun account, which can be tapped into if needed. Uh, and then finally, transaction costs of 48 million. So that is basically the entire uh, use of proceeds for the 1.1 billion. <clears throat> Here's our construction schedule. As I said, we're planning to be in construction Q3, or sorry, shipping concentrate um, by Q4, so in production of concentrate Q3 2019. Um, we do have an offtake agreement in place for that concentrate, so we will be generating revenue by the end of next year. Uh, on the electrochemical plant side, it is a two-year construction period, uh, which is why we're going to be selling the revenue for about a, or the concentrate for about a year. Um, and and the reason is 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 it's a two-year construction on the electrochemical plant. So we should start ramping up the electrochemical plant, uh, commissioning and ramping up Q3, and sort of ramping up throughout Q uh, throughout 2021. So by the end of 2021. Uh, you know, we should be at nameplate production. So very quickly, what have we done? Um, we've, we've produced an 1,100 ton bulk sample up at the mine site. So um, that would allow us to basically confirm that we can produce a good quality concentrate. So our concentrate is at 6.25%, compares very favorably to our Australian counterparts that are producing between 55 and say 6%. So uh, 6.25, lots of demand for that product uh, from the Chinese. Feasibility study <clears throat> is completed and our permitting is completed both at the mine site as well as in Schoenigan. Uh, the phase one plant has been successfully built and we've shipped, as I said, 50 tons, all battery grade lithium hydroxide. All of that product has gone to Johnson Matthey, who's one of our key offtake partners. So we have effectively two firm take or pay agreements uh, in place, one is with FMC, the other is with Johnson Matthey. And then we have signed um, a letter of intent with Northvolt. Northvolt is a Swedish gigafactory. It's a lot of uh, ex-Tesla people that have, that have uh, come to Sweden. They're building a gigafactory, mostly, I think, targeting European battery requirements. Um, so that we've signed a letter of intent to supply them. That should move to a firm definitive offtake agreement shortly. And then with, with um, SoftBank's investment, uh, it also gives them a right of first offer on up to 20% of our production. So allocated, we're probably about 70 to 75% of our product right now, commercial product being lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate, has been allocated already. So here is the project. We are located in Quebec, Canada. The mine will be here in Namaska. We'll mine 1.1 million tons of ore. We'll concentrate that into 213,000 tons of concentrate. <laughs> ship it by truck to Shibugamu, where it goes by rail and is railed down to Shewinigan. And Shewinigan is where we've located the electrochemical plant. So that is where you'll process the concentrate into battery chemicals, lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate. Here's the mine site. Um, despite the fact that we're in northern Quebec, we are well serviced by existing infrastructure. So you have got a commercial airport here, flies commercially out of Montreal five days a week. This is the deposit site, so from airport to deposit, it's about 25 kilometers. Uh, right here, you've got an existing lodging facility already in place, so that'll house our any fly-in, fly-out workers, as well as house um, our construction workers in the initial construction period of the mine. We've got two substations on either side. These are both 750 kVA substations, so lots of power. We've already contracted um, Hydro-Quebec. They've already run uh, 19 kilometers of electrical line into the plant site, or sorry, the mine site, um, and we will be hooked up to the grid in August of this uh, summer. And then finally, we've got the Cree community of Namaska, which represents a local workforce, and we are working with Cree right now to uh, do the necessary training to make sure that they have the skill set that be required for when the mine is up and in production. Here we are, this is our logistics, and this again just goes over. So we'll ship the concentrate out of the mine, put it on a truck, truck it to Shibugamu, rail it to Shewinigan, and then this is our facility in Shewinigan, where you do the transformation 
again, from concentrate into battery chemicals, hydroxide and uh, carbonate. Here's our facility in Chewin. Again, we were able to buy this facility for $2 million. So uh, this was a former pulp and paper mill. Um, uh, it had gone out of business, and so the city of Shawinigan had approached us and said they'd be interested in having Namaska, um, you know, set up shop in Shawinigan. Um, so we came down, we took a look at the facility, and it was a good fit for us. So we, this is in the green is where the commercial facility will be installed. This will uh, hold 33,000 tons. So that's our initial capacity will be 33,000 tons lithium carbonate equivalent or LCE. We will have uh, room for expansion within this facility. And so when our engineers are designing um, the, the facility, they'll be designing it with a view of expanding it down the road. And I think within this current building envelope, we can install, I think it's 55,000 tons LCE. So there is room for expansion, but of course, first we're gonna work on, on, on our, existing, um, our existing project, which is 33,000 tons. This is where the phase one plant was installed, uh, is installed and has been running for over a year. So there was a couple of purposes for building the phase one plant. One was to produce commercial samples and have those commercial samples qualified with um, existing customers or future offtake customers. And we've started that process with Johnson Matthey. We are in the process of qualifying, or they are in the process of qualifying us as a supplier based on the hydroxide that they've received from the phase one plant. <clears throat> the other thing, of course, is it's an excellent training tool, uh, as well as a tool to uh, help us make any corrections or tweaking of our flow sheet for the commercial facility. Um, Lots of infrastructure on site. Obviously, power is not an issue. This is a Hydro-Quebec um, electrical dam, so that's where we'll be, we'll be sourcing our power. Um, it is an electrochemical process, so it does require a fair bit of electricity. And then you've got right here uh, is a, a train track comes right in here to the site. So we've got existing rail on the site. <clears throat> our process, very quickly, I won't go over it too much, but basically, We've developed our own proprietary process to produce, um, to produce lithium hydroxide directly. So most of the lithium industry right now produces a lithium carbonate and then transforms the carbonate in a secondary process into hydroxide. Um, speaking with end users several years ago, uh, we realized that the lithium industry was probably over time gonna be moving to hydroxide and we've seen that sort of bear out in now in the recent developments of cathodes. So as you start to see higher nickel cathodes um, <clears throat> being produced, those cathode chemistries require hydroxide over carbonate. And so uh, our process allows us to go directly to hydroxide, gives us an interesting cost advantage, but also it gives us uh, a good purity. So this is a spec uh, sheet that we pulled. So these are market specifications that our engineering group pulled down off existing websites from existing producers. Uh, and we put in a range of what the industry sort of acceptable battery grade range is, and we broke it out by, uh, by element. And you can see in all of them, Namaska is either within that spec or well below. So product quality has been very good. Um, <clears throat> in terms of our, our key project economics, we have a 33-year mine life. Based on the new, based on the actual structure that we use to finance it now, the payback has moved from 2.9 to two-year payback period. Our IRR has increased to 56%. And again, that's based on the fact that we were able to do some debt as well as stream. The feasibility study would have been based 100% on equity. Um, so our, our, our NPV, again, reflecting the actual financing is now 2.2 billion, and that's using an 8% discount, and these are after tax, and obviously this is Canadian. Uh, here's our st share structure. Uh, we're 850 million outstanding uh, currently. Again, though, we have our project financing in hand. I don't anticipate having to do any additional equity at this point, based on the fact that we needed $800 million to build the project, and we raised $1.1 billion. Um, we're coming to the end here. I just want to show you where we fit in terms of the hydroxide. So these are, this is a, a chart done by Roskill. Roskill is an independent uh, uh, research group looking at industrial minerals, lithium being one of them. 
Um, and so this is where Namaska fits on the hydroxide cost curve. So we're coming in at 2,800 roughly. Uh, these are brines, these are hard rock, and then you've got the rest of these are, would be hard rock over here. So um, even on the brine, which has traditionally been considered the low cost method of production, Namaska is competitive um, or lower cost, projecting to be lower cost than, um, than the, than the br existing brine producers. Again, that's based on the fact that we own our own concentrate and we have a low cost, uh, a quality, high quality con. And then this is quickly where we come in on the, um, on the carbonate side. So we're not the lowest cost producer on the carbonate, but we're certainly very competitive. And that's the end of my presentation. So again, this is your mine site, your concentrator, and then your chemical processing facility. Uh, I'm upstairs if anybody would like to have any additional information, and I thank you for your attention. <laughs>